Let's learn about trig functions of real numbers. Well, remember that the circle with the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1 is called the unit circle because its radius is one unit long. And on the unit circle, we're going to define a function w that pairs real numbers on a vertical number line. So there's our vertical number line to points on the circle. Okay? So this function is called the wrapping function. And so if I pick a point on that number line and I can bend that number line so it's going along the circle, then it creates a point in the circle. It doesn't matter how far I am on the number line, okay? I can always pair it to a point in the circle. So that's called the wrapping function. So how do we use the wrapping function? Well, let's say we want to evaluate w of pi over 3. Since the coordinates of the point on the unit circle of an arc subtended by an angle theta equals pi over 3 are given by cosine of pi over 3, that's going to be the x coordinate, and sine of pi over 3, that's going to be the y coordinate, then we can now evaluate this function. So we go to pi over 3 and go out to our unit circle, and there is our cosine of pi over 3, and there's our sine of pi over 3. And so the wrapping function with pi over 3 plugged in will give us 1 half comma root 3 over 2. So to evaluate a wrapping function, you just take the cosine of the angle and the sine of the angle, and that gives you your coordinates for your wrapping function. So here it is laid out in this box. It says let w be the wrapping function, t be a real number, and w of t equals some point x comma y on the unit circle. So that means that sine is the y coordinate, cosine is the x coordinate, and remember that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so it's 1 over y. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so it's 1 over x. And tangent is y over x, which means that cotangent is the reciprocal of that, x over y. So at this point, it would probably be really helpful if you reviewed the unit circle for these key angles and refreshed your memory on the cosine and sine of all of these points on the unit circle. Okay, now this, we got went into this in deep, big detail in another screencast, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it here. But you might want to pause the screencast and copy down this unit circle in your notes if you don't have it already. Now, since we are going around and around a circle, then what happens is if I'm taking the sine of an angle theta, then every time I add 2 pi to that angle, I just add, I just end up right where I started, right? I just keep adding multiples of 2 pi, and I'm going to get exactly the same value. So that's what this is saying here. It says that if I'm taking the sine of an angle plus some multiple of 2 pi, that's exactly the same thing as the sine of just t. So you can subtract or add multiples of 2 pi to any angle t, and it's exactly the same as if you took the sine of the original angle t. Now, you'll notice that sine, cosine, secant, and cosecant all have a period of 2 pi. In other words, you can add or subtract as many multiples of 2 pi, and it won't change anything. Tangent and cotangent, on the other hand, on the other hand have a multiple of 1 pi. So when you're dealing with tangent and cotangent, you want to subtract multiples of 1 pi. Here's an example of how you'd use this uh, periodic feature of these, fun of these functions. Find the exact value of the sine of 8 pi over 3. OK, well, you'll notice that 8 pi over 3 is more than 2 pi. So I'm going to subtract 2 pi, which means that 8 pi over 3 minus 6 pi over 3 will give me 2 pi over 3. Since I subtracted a multiple of 2 pi, it won't hurt a thing. So we can say that the sine of 8 pi over 3 is exactly the same value as the sine of 2 pi over 3. And 2 pi over 3 is one of those angles you should know from the unit circle. It's right there. It's root 3 over 2. So that is our answer. On this example, we're asked to approximate the value of the secant of 12 pi over 13. Well, 12 pi over 13 is not one of those special angles that we've memorized from a unit circle, so it's time to bring out the calculator. And you want to make sure that you're in radian mode, and I am, okay? So secant is reciprocal of cosine. I'm going to go 1 divided by 
the cosine and I put in 12 pi divided by 13 and we hit enter and that's our answer. So take it out to uh, four decimal places or actually it looks like we can just take it out to two can't we? It's going to be negative 1.03 would be the secant of 12 pi over 13. All right now here's some fundamental trigonometric identities. These are really basic and they're super useful. Okay we've already talked about sine being the reciprocal of cosecant, cosine the reciprocal of secant, and tangent the reciprocal of cotangent. Now you may remember that we defined tangent on the unit circle to be y over x and since sine is the y coordinate and cosine is the x coordinate you can also write tangent as sine over cosine. And since cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent that can be written as cosine over sine. And then these are the Pythagorean identities. Cosine squared of any angle plus sine squared of the same angle always equals 1. 1 plus tangent squared of an angle is equal to secant squared of the same angle and 1 plus cotangent squared of an angle is equal to cosecant squared of the same angle. So how would you use this? Well let's say that we have this expression here tangent of x times the cosine of x. I'm going to rewrite tangent as sine of x over cosine x and we're multiplying that by cosine x and you'll notice that the cosines cancel and this reduces to the sine of x. Now that's a much easier expression to work with than tangent times cosine. So that's why these are useful. They simplify complicated trig expressions into much simpler ones. All right, how about this one? We're going to multiply 1 minus cosine of t times 1 plus cosine t. Well, I hope you remember from algebra that 1 minus x times 1 plus x is the difference of two squares, so it's 1 squared minus x squared. We're going to do that right here, except instead of x, I've got cosine of t. So this is just going to be 1 squared minus cosine squared of t. And by the way, I write cosine squared of t, which is exactly the same as saying cosine of t squared. They mean exactly the same thing, okay? All right, now, 1 minus cosine squared t. Well, remember that cosine squared t plus sine squared t equals 1. That's one of the Pythagorean identities. If I subtract cosine squared from both sides, I get sine squared t equals 1 minus cosine squared t, which is what this simplified to. So our answer will be sine squared t. And finally, what if we're given this problem here? Given that sine of angle t equals root 3 over 2 and the angle is between pi over 2 and pi, find the tangent of angle t. Okay, since t is between pi over 2 and pi, that means it's somewhere in the second quadrant. Okay, so there's angle t. Well, if you look on the unit circle, you will see that at 2 pi over 3, the sine of angle t is root 3 over 2 and the cosine of angle t is negative 1 half. Now since the tangent of t is the sine of t over the cosine of t, that's going to be root 3 over 2 over negative 1 half, which is root 3 over 2 times negative 2 over 1. When I'm dividing by a fraction, I turn around and flip it and multiply by the reciprocal. My 2's cancel, and my answer is negative root 3. So the tangent of angle t is negative root 3.